King County government working for you. This is our monthly TV show, uh, bringing you the services and the uh, people that bring you the services for Sheboygan County government. This month in our show, we are uh, have as our guest Tim Finch, the finance director. Uh, Adam Payne is on my left. Adam and I are the uh, co-sponsors of this show. And uh, we're going to be talking about our finance department today, and Tim is our guest. Um, the biggest project that the county board does every year is pass the budget. It's our, the document that affects county government the most, affects the taxpayers the most. And we're going to talk a lot about the budget today, but Tim, why don't we start by just giving us a little background as to your uh, the, the length of time you've been with the county and your history with county government. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I've been with uh, Sheboygan County about three years now, with specifically with the finance department since May 1st of two, 2000. So it's been a couple of years now in the, in the finance department where a lot of action takes place, as you know, and it's always exciting, never boring, and uh, a lot of challenges there. But it, it keeps, keeps life interesting. Uh, I live in the city of Sheboygan with my wife, Linda, and my daughter, Ashley. Hi, Linda and Ashley. Um, <laughs> And we enjoy it here. It's, it's a very nice place to live, and I've enjoyed working for the county side. It's, it's been a nice experience for me. And you've been with the um, finance department for a couple of years now. What, why don't you fill us in just a little bit on the roles and responsibilities of the finance department? Sure. They're far-reaching and really reach, uh, touch a lot, of, a lot of different departments. Uh, all the departments, as far as budgeting goes, were responsible for all the countywide uh, financial functions, accounting, uh, doing financial statements, accounts payable, payroll. Uh, a big part of our job is to do um, consulting, if you will, or, or um, helping of departments uh, dealing with different issues, billing issues, um, different types of accounting things that come up. So budgeting is probably one of the biggest things we do in auditing, uh, working with the external auditor to do the annual audit. Uh, those are the, the two real big ones, but there are just a lot of things that we get involved in. We mentioned the budget several times now, and, and I said that that was the, the one document that the board passes that's the most important. Without, without money, our, our departments can't function. Uh, they rely on, on the county board to pass that and, and to levy the tax for it. Maybe you could just give our viewers just a little insight as to the process that we go through as we develop that budget. Sure, I'd be glad to. It, <clears throat> excuse me, it is, it is a long long involved process. It begins early in the year, actually March or April. Uh, Adam and yourself and, and others will start, the Finance Committee will start looking at what's coming up for the year ahead. You know, what do we expect um, as far as issues or what do we need to deal with with the budget and start getting kind of a general idea of what the targets are going to be, what's going to happen with the tax rate. You know, um, so it really starts March, April. Then in June, it starts in earnest with our budget kickoff, which is a meeting with the Finance Committee, um, yourself would be in attendance, uh, administrative coordinator, and then all the department heads come. And everybody gets the, the flavor for what the budget process is going to be for the upcoming year and what the targets are, what they need to shoot for. For, for 2003, as it's been for our last several years, they've been given a, a, a directive <clears throat> that um, they have to keep their spending to a 0% increase for capital outlay and, and operating expenses. So it, it's a time when they come in and they, they learn what the Finance Committee sees as the, uh, in, the, in the next coming budget year, and then they go back and start working on their budgets. Then in, in July and August, they have to come through and meet with Adam and myself and go over their budget before they go back to their own committee. So that's kind of like a, a preliminary review. We go through their budget, uh, make refinements or suggestions that uh, we think that they, they need to do, challenge them in a lot of areas. Uh, to justify what they're budgeting. So that's kind of the first step they have to get past the administrative coordinator and myself. Then they go to their liaison committee. So at that point, then they go through the whole process again, take their budget in. If they've changed it at all, um, you know, they go over that. They explain how they came up with their numbers. And if they have any difference between last year's budget and uh, the new budget, they have to explain that in detail, you know, how they came up with additional costs. We call them variances. So if there are variances, they're going to have to justify those very carefully uh, in order to get those funded. Uh, then there are, uh, after that, there are meetings with the Finance Committee. So the Finance Committee will go over each budget, and the department heads and liaison committee members will be there to, to justify and to support their budget. So that's the Finance Depart uh, Committee's uh, kick at the, at the budget. Then in October, 
the, there's a notice published for a public hearing, which is also in October. That's when the public can get real heavily involved if they want to, and they can come to the public hearing and ask questions and make comments. And the county board also does a line-by-line -line review. They could request to look at the detail for any, any item in the budget. And there are thousands of different accounts, but if they want to go into one account, they can do that. So they get a chance to go over it in detail uh, at that time. And then November, uh, it's finally adopted with any last minute changes. So uh, in November, the, the final product is finished. You mentioned that uh, in October, there's a public hearing on the budget and the public can get involved at that point. But even through this whole process, when the liaison committees are meeting, when they meet with the finance committee, these are all public meetings. And, and if, if the public wants to attend any of these, uh, they, can, they can find out uh, either on a, on a website when these meetings are or, or call your department, finance department, and find out when some of these meetings are if they're interested in a specific department. Uh, those meetings are all open to the public. Yeah, that's a good point because if uh, the budget process starts very early in the year, as we already talked about, they don't have to wait until the, the county right. board meeting to get involved. Any finance committee meeting is open to the public and they could start coming in June, July, and uh, almost every meeting there's something going on with the budget at the Finance Committee, so you're right, the opportunity is there, and if they really are interested uh, to, to really know what's going on, that would be the best thing for them to do. You mentioned earlier that, that we set targets, and everybody knows what a target is. It's, it's something you, you throw the dart at or, you, or you're shooting at. Uh, how, how does the committee and the finance department set these targets? What, what information do they use to do that? Sure, it, it is a cooperative effort. There are a lot of people involved in setting targets, beginning with the, the finance committee, administrative coordinator, county board chairman, get together, and, and they just use the best available information they have about what's, what's coming up. Uh, as an example, we know for next year, one of our big issues is health insurance. The costs are going up. Uh, in incredibly going up and it's not just us others are experiencing the same problem but uh, by putting together information things that we do know are coming up uh, we throw that together and, and start looking at what's going to happen to to the budget um, there are some other major issues uh, wages and benefits are one of the things that have to be looked at uh, we know that pretty much goes up every year but we need to control that that's the biggest cost for Sheboygan County is wage and benefits so there has to be a concerted effort to try to keep that um, under control somewhat. So, you know, those kind of things go into looking at the at how we set our targets and the decision. What do we want to do with the tax rate? Do we want a stable tax rate? Is it okay to have the tax rate continue to go up? Um, so there's a, a lot of things to look at, but it is a, a joint effort with a, a lot of people. You mentioned the tax rate. Obviously. If we, uh, if we don't reach our targets, we, we exceed them, uh, our only option is to raise the property tax. Uh, are there limits as to what Sheboygan County can, can tax our property tax uh, on the property tax? Absolutely, there are limits. Uh, actually, we're limited by the rate that was in effect in 1992. State statute capped it at that 90, 1992 level, so actually that's what, we're, what's our, what our rate is. Our actual dollar levy can go up because the equalized value goes up. And, and uh, the dollars we levy, it's a result of multiplying the rate times the equalized value. So if the rate stays the same but the equalized value goes up, we will generate more money. But we can't change our rate. We can't increase that actual rate. So the only, the only relief we get each year in increased levy is because the equalized value goes up. Um, fortunately, our costs are actually below that maximum rate right now, that, that the 92 rate that they set. So we have some cushion between the rate we have now and what we could have as a rate. So there's a little bit of room there, but there's not a lot of room. How much, how much room About is 12 there? cents right now. So, so, so our rate right now is 648 in 2002. So the maximum we could add to that rate per thousand is, is 12 cents. That's correct, yep. Okay. As the departments go through their budgets and, and develop them, uh, they report to their, their liaison committee. You mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. What is the role of the liaison committee in, in this budget process? They're the, they really are the ones who should develop the budget. The, the department head will, will give them a budget that they think is appropriate for the department, but the liaison committee, they run the department. I mean, the department head reports to them. They make the decisions. The county board supervisors are the ones. They're decision makers for the county. 
So it really, it's really their budget. They need to look at what the Department of Head brings forward and ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, is there a reason why your costs have gone up? What's hap going to happen with your revenue? Uh, can you increase your revenue sources? Um, they, they're the first line of defense in keeping the tax rate down. So they need to real, do a real thorough job at that level. So just using an example, the Sheriff's Department reports to the Law Committee. And that's their liaison committee. So as the Sheriff's Department develops their budget, they bring it to the Liaison Committee, which is the Law Committee. The Law Committee has responsibility for approving that budget before it goes to the Finance Committee. And then, and then ultimately correct. to the County Board. So it's their responsibility to look at that budget to, uh, to make the department justify the expenses that they have in there and, and, and really go over it with a fine tooth comb. Yes, they do. It's really, it's really their budget. Department head may prepare it for them, but it, ultimately it's their responsibility. So uh, they, they are the ones who really need to be decision makers at that stage of the process as to what do they want in that budget. So we have 23 different departments and, and, and reporting to 11 or 12 liaison committees. How does this all get pulled together into one final county board budget? Well, it's a, a fun process to, to say the least, and the finance committee really is the one who pulls it, pulls it out together with the help of the finance department. Uh, they end up reviewing every single budget. They sometimes make hard decisions about what to do with individual budgets. Um, they have a, a meeting. It's a finance committee meeting, but the liaison committee and department head are invited to go over those individual budgets. And so a lot of, this, uh, of the um, things are hashed out at, at that point. And, and they will put together a final budget for submission to the county board. And just could you just repeat the, the, the timetable at the end there where we actually pass the budget by state statute? Or is that, there's, there's, uh, a window of, of time where we have to pass that sure, budget? Sure, sure. In October, we have uh, a public hearing in October. Also in October, there's a line-by-line -line review by the county board where they can scrutinize anything in the budget. And then in November, it's adopted. Right around the first, second week in November, it'll be adopted. Good. Tim, you gave a real nice overview of the, the budget process and the targets and the goals. And in 1999, we, we instituted a new budget process here. I think at the time, Dan, you were chairman of the finance committee and vice chairman of the county board. Um, our viewers are probably wondering, well, how have we done? Has this process been effective? What's your opinion? I think it's been very effective. We can go to uh, some of the charts to take a look if we want to uh, focus on what's kind of happened with our county tax rate. Uh, for Sheboygan County, we've got 1997 to 2002. No, we don't know yet for 2003 where we're going to be, but our target is to be right where we're at in 2002, 648 for the county rates. So you can see from 97 to 99, the trend was up. Uh, it was a pretty, uh, I mean, it's a very definite trend up in, in the rate. In 2000, uh, it leveled off, no increase in the rate. 2001, it did bump up a little bit here, and 2002, it dropped back down. So there's quite a nice plateau that we've reached here for the last uh, last three years anyway um, that's a nice improvement over you know what we saw before so I think definitely the things are working setting the targets has, has had an effect and I, I think you have another slide there that gives a little more specifics about that tax rate and how in, how in fact it has changed over the last few years sure the, the actual rate itself um, you can see here it was quite a big increase uh, from 97 to 98 was Quite a large increase, eight percent increase in the in the rate, and then uh, another more than eight percent increase in the rate in '99, 2000, no increase. So the rate stayed the same from '99 to 2000. A little bit of an increase here, less than four percent. An actual decrease here. We went from 650 in 2001 to 648 in 2002. So actually, for 2002, we were able to drop the rate uh, somewhat. Now this this doesn't tell the whole picture because. The rate doesn't tell how many dollars we actually uh, increase uh, levied to, for, from the taxpayers. The rate is one factor, but then the equalized value is the other. So when you multiply those two together, you get an actual dollar increase in the levy. And you can see um, uh, there was over 5%, probably 6.5%, 7% here, over 15 here, almost 15 here. And then once the targets and the new process kicked in, the, rate inc the actual levy increases have been significantly less for the last three years, so it's, it's had a very good effect. 
So in the last three years, and this is a lot of information to absor absorb, in the last three years we've had less than a 3% increase in our tax rate combined in the last three years. Correct. Uh, when you look at our tax levy, people may wonder, well, if we've been that successful holding the line in the rate, why is our levy going up? And that gets right back to what you said earlier, when equalized value goes up, when their property values go up, we do see more revenue Correct. coming into the county. So right. though we've held the line with the rate, and that continues to be the goal for 2004, mm -hmm. it isn't as though county government is stagnant. We're still seeing some revenue coming in through property values. Correct. And you, and you really, you do need this additional revenue. Even if your rate stays the same, you're going to get, as you said, a bump in revenue because the equalized value has gone up. But you have to account for um, some kind of increase in wages and benefits because you know that they're going to go up pretty much every year. So the, the bump in equalized value gives enough to basically to, to cover those things as long as we, we can control that. Now I know the done. three of us take a lot of pride in the fact that we've been successful the last few years in holding the line on the tax rate. And as you talked about the process, one of the things that we didn't mention was the leadership forum that we have each year. What's been the value of that? That's something that Dan was involved with implementing and uh, how has that contributed to our success? Well I think it's done a real good job. It's brought the county board supervisors into the loop with the finance committee where maybe uh, maybe they wouldn't, you know, normally get that information. What the finance committee uses to make decisions on targets, you know, what's out there, intergovernmental transfer, health insurance situation, topics that the finance committee deals with all the time, but other committees maybe wouldn't deal with that. So the forum is a real good opportunity to give them the kind of information that, that they need as the ultimate decision makers that they are on the budget to understand where do we need to go and what kind of things do we need to look at, what are the challenges facing us. So brought everyone, everyone together and, and made sure that they got some good information. I think we've seen a lot more ownership for the process and it also, again, your point earlier about the liaison committee being the first line of defense to keep that tax rate down. Absolutely. They have more ownership for the goal and, and therefore they've done a good job. Expenditures. Let's move on to give our viewers a, a feel for expenditures. We have over a hundred and thirty million dollar budget here in Sheboygan County. Uh, where are those dollars going? It, interesting. This is something that I think most people would find, I, I think, kind of interesting, you know, where we spend our money. And the pie chart is a great way to, to see that because you can really see of the total piece of, of the pie, which is almost $132 million budget in 2002. And we know this will go up somewhat for 2003. But probably the, the spending um, ratios here probably won't change that much. The biggest, um, by far the, the biggest, uh, chunk here is you're going to uh, health and human services. So the, the white piece of the pie, uh, health and human services, so it's our, our large, largest department. Closely followed by health care centers here in the red. Also uh, over $31 million in total expenditures. And one thing you do have to realize is that they cover the lion's share of their expenditures with, with revenue. They have charges for services they can charge. Medicaid, Medicare, uh, et cetera. So they do cover a, a lot with revenue they generate. Health and Human Services does generate some revenue, but not, not nearly the amount that healthcare does. Um, so most of the expenditures, really almost half, are taken up by two departments in the county right there. And you've got a pretty sizable piece, almost 19 million here for uh, general administration would be all the uh, general fund departments, um, uh, register of deeds, treasurer, finance, etc. Um, another good sized piece here, which is in blue, um, and I'm struggling with public works, so highway department, um, uh, airport, etc. So there are a lot of a lot of dollars goes into there. And then the, some some smaller pieces over here, um, justice and law. Actually, it's not so small, over 50 million dollars. <laughs> Sheriff, clerk of courts, uh, DA, etc. So that's uh, fairly, fairly expensive. And then the, the more minor players here, uh, the smallest piece would be um, environmental planning and resources, land conservation, um, and then the rest is brought up by debt service here, over six million dollars for debt service. That's to pay for borrowed money to do some of our bigger projects, construction projects. So, so as our viewers are looking at this, and it may be difficult to pick up, Please, if you would like copies of this information or a better feel for where the expenditures are, certainly contact our finance 
director or myself and we'll forward this on. The big four, as we like to think of them, are uh, the highway department, health and human services, the health care centers, and the sheriff's department. Those really make up the bulk of our overall expenditures. And um, it's difficult each year to achieve the goal, challenging certainly to achieve the goal of maintaining that rate. That means holding the line on expenditures. And you touched on earlier, Tim, the challenges we face. One of the largest is salary and wages. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of the challenges we have with maintaining that tax rate? Well, the, the, the wage and salary is almost half of our entire budget. So any increase we see in that category is going to have a big dollar impact. Even a small percentage increase is going to have a big dollar impact. So that's one thing that going, you know, in the future we look at, we have to control wages and benefits. Um, there are many of our employees are represented by unions. So it has, it's going to have to be a, a cooperative process between the county and the unions to, to keep those costs um, in line. So that, though, that's the biggest challenge I think we face in the future. The next biggest would be health insurance. Um, we know that costs are going up everywhere for health insurance for a variety of reasons. Usage is up for Sheboygan County among its employees. The actual um, number of claims is increasing. Um, so that's part of the issue with us, and costs are going up as well. So we have to find a way to, to, uh, to control that. We're looking at about a 29% increase in health care costs for the 2003 budget. So like significant uh, And 29%, 30%, that's a couple million dollars, couple million dollars in, in health I mean. insurance, just in health insurance. So. Yeah. And that point is a real good one to emphasize. We talked earlier about equalized value or property values going up. We're anticipating about $1.8 million of additional revenue. Right. Well, if our health insurance is going up two, two and a half million dollars alone, uh, I think people can begin to recognize just how challenging it is to offset the salary and wage increases that people expect each year. Yeah. I mean, we've got a real effective workforce here, but we have eight different bargaining contracts to negotiate with. And um, that's a challenging process. It's very, very challenging. And often there are not easy answers to how you compensate your employees fairly um, and you know, equitably and still try to control the budget when it's half of your budget. What about just general operations? We talk about half being salary and wage, but uh, paper costs more and uh, laying uh, uh, blacktop costs more each year. How are we doing in that regard? Well, we're, t we're telling the departments they have to hold the line. And um, some departments can't do that. They come in with a variance request in their budget, which means that uh, if they've been told they can't have an increase in a, in a line item from 2002 to 2003, and they have to have an they say they have to have an increase, they have to uh, justify that with a variance request. So uh, a lot of departments have been able to absorb that zero percent increase and continue to do the job with the same dollars. Some some can't. People can't get away without reading the paper or hearing on the radio all the state budget implications and shared revenue, and we've had some programs on that and, and certainly have been talking daily, if not weekly, about how we're going to respond and prepare. Uh, what at this point are the implications of the uh, legislative compromise that the governor is now considering? What, what's happening for counties, specifically Sheboygan County? Well, thankfully, it's not what the governor proposed because what he proposed was losing all of our state shared revenue in 2002 after our budget had actually been adopted. So $3.7 million of revenue we had counted on would have been lost. So, um, you know, that didn't, doesn't look like that's going to happen. And, and actually, it doesn't look like anything's going to happen in 2003. But in 2004, we stand to lose um, about between $500,000 and a million dollars in, in state shared revenue. But that's down the road a little bit, so we have some time to to prepare for that. We have some time um, to prepare and the county board just took action to extend our hiring freeze through 2003 to garner those savings and and uh, prepare accordingly. That was significant I think the fact that they they did ratify that or not ratify it but they extended it um, because it was only temporary before that was crucial that that, that happened so I was glad to see that, that they did that. Thank you Tim well done. Tim you talked about on, on your charts how we have control the levy, the rate at least, and, and have been able to do that over the last three years. During that time, we've asked the departments to uh, be pretty lean on their, on their budgets and, and their, their capital outlay and, and operations. And one of the ways we asked them to do that was to be a little creative and innovative 
as they develop their budgets. Maybe, maybe there is a new program that is needed, but then we need to eliminate an older program. Uh, could you just highlight a few of the things that are maybe in the future coming up as to some of the improvements we can see in county government, even though we're trying to uh, keep a flat, a flat rate? Sure. Every year we prepare a five-year capital plan. It's something that the, both the executive and finance committees are heavily involved in. And uh, the county board then will actually look at that and make determination. There are always things that you need to do, you know, big projects that you need to do. So we do have some coming up. Uh, for 2003, the largest is the science edition right here at UW-Sheboygan. Uh, it's over $4, $4 million project cost. So that's in the five-year plan for 2003. Uh, county Highway project to relocate uh, County Highway O, and that's uh, for the airport so they can expand the airport. That's a large project. There's some other airport improvements that, that they want to do. And courthouse improvements to the heating and, and air conditioning system and some other items. And software and computer hardware upgrades seem to be just a continual thing that we're dealing with. You know, you'd like to get away from that at some point, but it all, it's just impossible to do because uh, with the technology, the upgrades just come constantly. So there's always some of those things in the budget. technology is not inexpensive. It is very expensive, yeah. very expensive. Uh, one of the other things that, that we've talked about through the course of this half hour is the public input. And the, if we have cuts, if the public waits until after we cut, then we hear from the public. You, know, you took away the service from me. Mm -hmm. uh, the public has to inform the county board as to what level of service they would like and what they're willing to pay for. And so I, I really would like you to, one more time, uh, just go over a little bit how the public can get involved and how the public can let us know what their concerns are, what level of services they would like to see prior to us passing the budget instead of telling us after we pass the budget. Sure. Come to the Finance Committee meetings. They meet every Thursday at 1.30 in room 119 of the Administration Building. Come to those meetings. That's, that's really where the rubber meets the road when it comes to the budget. And they'll have a real good understanding of that process. And then attend the public hearing in October. That'll be uh, advertised in the newspaper. So the date will be in the newspaper. It'll tell them where to go, what their preliminary budget is. Uh, come to that meeting and um, ask questions at the public, the public hearing portion of the meeting. Ask questions about the budget. Uh, but they'll, they'll really learn the most if they come to some finance committee meetings. So I would, I would encourage them to, to do that. And at minimum, if they don't do that, to contact their county board supervisor, their representative. Right. And if they don't know who that person is, they can contact the county clerk's office and Absolutely. the name will be provided. Absolutely. And to, and to come to a public meeting and comment on the budget without seeing the budget is hard, too. If, if they like a summary of the budget, they can go, come to your finance department yes. and get a summary of that? They can contact our office. We're in the second floor of the administration building. Uh -huh. Yep. Thank you, Tim. We'll probably get you back on our show closer to the budget and, and, and see how we're doing. Sir, my pleasure. Uh, next month, we're going to have Dale Pulse, the uh, administrator of our health care centers. Uh, as we tape this in July, uh, we're moving, consolidating our, our comprehensive health center residents into Rocky Knoll. And Dale will come and, and let us know what we've done in that area and, and in the future of our health care centers. Thank you.